It's now time to go through the winners and losers of the week. First up, the SNP, who are sending asylum seekers in Scotland on training to teach them how to detect racist microaggressions against them. <laughs> That's right, the SNP are worried that asylum seekers, who they've rebranded New Scots, won't know when someone's being racist to them, so are spending taxpayers' money on courses tailored to help them understand racism in Scotland and anti-racist approaches. I mean, imagine a crime that is so minimal, you have to be taught that you're a victim of it. According to the Scottish government, microaggressions are examples of indirect or intentional discrimination or unintentional discrimination, often verbal, directed at minority groups. Common examples include complimenting a person of colour on their intelligence, or a white person making a statement such as, I believe the most qualified person should get the job. That's right. <laughs> Telling someone they're smart or picking the right person for a job yes. is a racist hate crime now in Scotland. I guess it explains why their leaders have been so useless. Now, guys, they're training people to feel aggrieved. I mean, this, this feels like there wasn't a problem, but they're yeah. trying to make it's, a problem. It's like COVID, that the symptoms are now so mild. <laughs> they have to tell you you've got it. Like, have I? Yes. But I think this is a thing, of be serious, I think there's a thing where they want to keep the West feeling guilt and shame all the time instead of yeah. congratulating ourselves yeah. and going, we're actually very tolerant. Yeah. There aren't right-wing gangs roaming the streets like Clockwork Orange attacking immigrants. Actually, they're fine. And they're saying that they're not, obviously not reporting enough hate crimes. So they've now got to drop the bar. Yeah. Because I think if you feel shame and, and, um, and guilt, then they, you're easy to push around and have your rights taken and, away. And you're absolutely right. And the trouble is that, isn't it? If you try and find offence, you will find it. Yeah. And the more you define it and tweak it and say, look, you're, oh, you're so clever. Oh, I'm so sorry, I wouldn't do that. Is... Or open a door for somebody, how offensive is that? Or all the common courtesies we used to have. Well, yeah, We've lost all that sort of and, stuff, haven't we? Microaggressions are so ridiculous. Yes. I mean, some of the, I, I, and it, to, to be happening in Scotland, where a bigger problem is, is macroaggression. Yes. You know I mean, if you, yeah, microaggressions are, are bad, go to Dundee and see a full-size aggression. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Microaggressions, apparently if you make too much eye contact with a woman, yes. that can be seen as sexual harassment. And if you make insufficient eye contact with somebody that's uh, a different ethnicity to you, that can be seen as racism. So mm. to make sure you don't commit a microaggression, you've got to stand with your eyes swivelling in different directions. So, all it's crazy. And Macron aggression, obviously, against the French as well. <laughs> yeah. So you work on that sort of basis. No, it's rubbish. Absolute rubbish. And we should call it out. And the irony is they're now bringing in people of other cultures that don't see these microaggressions. Yeah. They, don't, they don't see there's a problem. So we're now giving them problems. We're teaching yeah. them. Teach them to be, uh, be miserable <laughs> and, and feel like a victim. <laughs> oh, you're not enough of a victim. You don't realize how much of a victim you are. Come here. Come be a victim. But you have to ask, don't you, how they come come up with this list, they must consult people. Yeah. And they probably get paid thousands to NGOs come up with the list. It just doesn't... Special advice yeah, and they turn around and say, you're your best person for the world, can't say that. I, <laughs> I honestly think we're, of Scotland are too tolerant. They, yeah. they thought the narrative... Should, it's like these Elgin marbles. They've been talking about for 30 years. Yes. Just send them back. Yeah. The whole thing seems to be they want that conversation always is. So, oh, we're awful, we're colonisers, we pillage everywhere. Yeah. Just send them back. No only nerds go to museums but, anyway. But we like to complain. We don't like solutions. People are so good at finding it's, problems. Yeah, yeah. And if there isn't a problem but, there, we have to find one. But it's always blaming us. Same with the climate thing. It's like, that's why they can do things like you, Les, for your own good, because you're evil. It's us, oh, I'm, I'm destroying the planet. I don't know if we are, and I don't know if, if there's no there's no racism. We have to always be made to feel like villains. Yeah, absolutely. And do you think, you know, the Scottish hate crime law that came through, yes. it was you know widely lampooned, and also it hasn't, you know, not many people have actually been successfully, um, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, I don't, I think, I don't think you'd... Them. I think the things that the bar's so low, you wouldn't even report some of the things that they would say are hate crimes. Yeah, but, yeah. So I don't the, think the, the person who wins the prize for that is J.K. Rowling for making sure early on mm -hmm. she went out there and said, I'm going to say all these things, come and arrest me. Yeah. And that, that resulted in that. Because when the police first started with that, they said, we're going to investigate every single complaint. Yeah. Not, not if your bike gets nicked or somebody robs you in the street, but every single complaint on the, on the hate crime thing, that's what they would do. And, and J.K., to her credit, came out and, and made sure that didn't happen. Absolutely, yeah. She pretty much brought it down single-handedly.